Uh, can you think about the differences and tell me a little bit about um, what it's like writing a comic versus writing a feature screenplay? Oh, I mean, there are a lot of differences. It's interesting because with comics, you're thinking about the still frames. Like, how do you best tell a story through still images and like key moments? Because you really get like one action and one emotion per panel. But then when you're writing a screenplay, you're thinking about it in fluid motion. You're thinking about like, you know, what can you get in what the characters are actually doing? Um, they're, they're similar, but, but different. Also comics are a lot more condensed. Like there, it's one of the most economical means of storytelling visually that you can, you can do. And it's, it's very tricky. It's a lot harder than people think. Hi, Christina, thank you so much for being here today. I am um, Bella Armali and I wanted to know, we love season one and season two. And I know what, you, I think I would know what your mission statement is, but if, um, if you're, the show had a mission statement, what would it be? Uh, which show? Uh, of our, um, I'm so sorry, Finding Ohana, I just completely blanked out. Finding Ohana, what, what would the mission statements be? Like, uh, what is it that you're trying your audience goers to learn and walk away with? Just, uh, you know, basically, it's really a story about family, both, um, you know, familial, like your birth family and found family, and discovering a sense of identity and wonder. Like the thing that I would like people to take away from it is, you know, be brave, you know, know who you are, figure out who you are. And then on top of that, you know, family is the most important thing there is. Thank you so much. Hi you guys. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Amanda from uh, Guide for Moms and Crazy Amanda Reacts on YouTube. And I wanted to start off just by asking, you know, the simple what inspired you to make this? Either one could answer too. <laughs> so I'll pass this one off to Jude real fast. The, the thing that inspired me to write this was very much Goonies. Um, like I grew up loving Goonies and Indiana Jones and like Kikwan was a huge part of that. So like what really inspired me was I was just like, I really want to write a Goonies in Hawaii that's about family, it's about culture, and that's about like seeing faces that like a younger me could have identified with, you know, Asian American Pacific Islander faces that like, I wanted a movie full of datas. <laughs> like that character was amazing in Goonies. So I just wanted to write a movie like full of him. <laughs> and I saw that he's in this, right? Yes, <laughs> yes Jude. Jude's <laughs> okay. the reason. <laughs> Um, uh, I'll, I'll share why I wanted to work on this movie. Um, after reading Christina's script, which was so wonderful, so fun, um, she and I had very similar influences, the Goonies, Indiana Jones, you know, movies of that era. The two of us would always say, let's make it, let's, we want to make an Amblin movie. And to us, what that meant was, you know, if you remember the Amblin movies of the 80s, they were uh, a very high concept, fantastical experiences, but it was always very emotionally grounded. And the kids talked like real kids. You know, you believed these kids, you believed their feelings. And that was really important to me as a filmmaker. And then I will say that personally, um, a few years ago, I took a DNA test and uh, I, I was raised Chinese, Chinese American. And I was very surprised to find out that uh, Polynesian showed up in my DNA results. And all of a sudden I kind of went on this personal journey. Well, what does it mean to have some this heritage or you know to have this in my DNA but I wasn't raised to be Polynesian I wasn't raised culturally to experience po being Polynesian and so what does that mean um, and, and amazingly enough you know finding Ohana fell into my lap and that's really sort of for me the subtext and what the story is really about is here are two kids Pili and Iowane you know Hawaiian diaspora raised in Brooklyn and here they are returning to Hawaii not having been really raised in the culture, what does it mean to them? And the whole movie is about their journey, journey and discovery and connection to, to their culture and heritage. And for me, I hope what viewers take away is at the end of the day, it's really never too late to find out who you are and to connect to that. I love it. Amanda sort of took my question because you ended up going to the whole Goonies thing, but I guess I'll, sort of aligning with that, are there any fun facts that maybe your audience can look forward to? Like, are there any other references, things that maybe you incorporated from the film that we can see sort of throughout? 
Yeah, thanks to Jude and our props department, there are some really fun, like, Goonies kind of winks and nods. Like, there are a few things that I wrote in the script, but they were a lot less direct than what, like, our director and crew did. Like, they did such a good job of being like, Goonies, huh? Let's make sure people know. Can you share some of what those are? Uh, yeah, and, and and not only to the Goonies, there's also some uh, visual homages and Easter eggs to um, Temple of Doom, which also Ki Kwan was in. Yes. And so if you've seen the trailer, then you'll notice that when Peely is driving the truck and she steals Papa's truck, you know, she had a couple of cans of Spam strapped to her feet when she steps on the accelerator. And that is very much a nod to a uh, short round driving Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. It was amazing. We were laughing the entire time. So thank you for this film. It was, it was really, really good. Um, there's a lot more Easter eggs and I, I kind of don't want to spoil all of them. Yeah. Audiences will have so much fun looking for them and talking about it online. And we just have to say, we loved the movie. Um, we're actually very big fans of Hawaii, except we haven't been, we usually go every year. And obviously with the pandemic, we haven't been last year and we probably won't go this year. And my question is, while filming, were there any like favorite places or things you could share that you guys did offset like in Hawaii or in Oahu? Oh man, that's a good question. The, the biggest thing for me, honestly, was like going to Kualoa Ranch, which was on set, like, cause that ranch was uh, one of the coolest places that I visited pre-writing the film. And part of the reason that the ranch is in the film is because like it had such a big impression on me pre-writing it. So like having the ability to drive onto the ranch for me was like mind blowing. Uh, that being said, there's a ton of stuff that's great to do in Oahu. Um, there's like, there's some places that you can cliff dive. I don't know if I can talk about that. <laughs> There's incredible food. Um, Jude went to this great t-shirt store where she got me some fantastic t-shirts. But like, I was wrangling kids. What's that little beach that we shot um, at, like, that you have to climb down to? Um, Halona, Halona Bay. That place Halona, is gorgeous. Halona I took my son there. My, my son was, like, blown away by that bay. Like, he was totally into it. There's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a magical place. It is and when you just, put um, you guys put Leonard's Bakery at the end, which I mean, obviously every single morning that's where we go. My kids were like, Leonard's! like it was just, it was so great. It made us, you know, obviously miss it when you're just staring at the same walls. You know, it was yeah, it was such a great movie. Uh, I just want to add a fun little fact to the Holona blowhole that Christina was mentioning. Um, that very famously is where they shot that movie from here to eternity. And it's that famous scene where, you know, the man and the woman are rolling in the beach and kissing each other anyway. So there's some fun history to many of the places that we filmed. And uh, there's one particular location that I actually can't really talk about because I'm afraid of, you know, uh, revealing any spoilers, but I will say there was a very deep spiritual connection uh, to one of the places that we filmed. Well, to many places that we filmed, but one in particular. And so I can't wait for uh, not only film goers or, or film watchers to watch this movie, but I feel like people from Hawaii will notice some of the places that we shot and say, oh, that was really specific and very intentional. Um, the film was amazing. Uh, my question is, um, especially during this time, how is it, how important is this movie in terms of representation? I mean, I think it's incredibly important, right? Like the whole, it's interesting. I wrote this film when I was in grad school. So I never wrote this film with the intention of it. I mean, I, I you know, you write everything with the intention of it existing, but like, <laughs> I didn't have the expectation of that actually happening. So I wrote it for me because it was something that didn't exist. You know, like, like I said, like I was just inspired by the idea that younger me could have seen a version of Goonies with way more, you know, Asian American and Pacific Islander influence. And like, so I wrote it for myself from a very, very personal place. And for it to exist, it is incredible. And on top of that, like, you know, Jude felt a similar way because th this was the film that she was looking for. Our 
um, Netflix exec who spearheaded all this, Janet Wu, she was like looking for a script in this vein, but nobody had been writing anything like this. So like, it's really important for these things to exist because the sheer fact that I got, that I saw Ki Kwan in Goonies is the whole reason I wrote this movie, you know, like seeing him made me want to see more. And so like I wrote it and I would like to think that the best thing this film could do for the future is, you know, some kid will see it and want to make something themselves because they see themselves in it like if you don't see yourself in a movie you're not going to think that you you should be represented okay. which is not true you you do deserve to be represented <laughs> i have a question for christina uh could you please tell me uh the story behind the spanish journal because for me it's amazing to to to, to watch the movie and and saw those words in spanish i love the journals by the way it's amazing So what's interesting is that's a real, that's a real thing that it's based on. I remember when I was doing research for the movie, uh, like for the, the original version of the script, the thing I knew I wanted was some sort of treasure for the kids to look for. So I was looking for Spanish treasures off of the coast of, you know, various Hawaiian islands, just trying to see if there was anything there that I could right towards because I also really love taking real things and incorporating them into my scripts because then they feel more like not authentic but there's just like an extra layer of like something about it and that's it's a real treasure the Peruvian is a real ship that disappeared years ago Robinson's monks and um Brown are real people that are mentioned in the legend behind this ship disappearing that all like that all came from research <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> I was excited when I found it too. And then on top of that, that's another nod to Goonies, the fact that, you know, there is Spanish that needs to be translated. That was a thing that happened in Goonies. And I was just, I just remember when it happened, like when I read that, I was like, oh, this is, this is great. This is appealing to all of my wants. And, and Sandra, just to add to it, um, that prop is probably the single most expensive prop in the entire movie because it was so lovingly created by our props master, Guillaume Delouche. Um, it, the, the book is made by, it's handmade, it's hand-stitched um, it, it, so that it's all period appropriate. Uh, we hired um, uh, like period appropriate calligraphers who knew how to write in that style. And all of the art style is done in the, in the appropriate period as well. So, I mean, if, when you like turn through the journal, it is just so spectacular, every piece of artwork that's in it. So yeah, single most expensive prop in the entire movie. Uh, Jude and Christina, I see that you both have a very long uh, career as a producer, uh, illustrator, you, Christina, and uh, uh, a very successful career also as a writers and directors. So tell me what books or writers inspired you to write and to create what you do for us? Um, you know, the first thought that I had come to mind is I really love um, the screenplays written by Lawrence Kasdan, who is a, you know, like, incredible screenwriter. Um, I also personally love, I love a lot of YA fantasy, which does not at all apply to this. <laughs> like, The Last Unicorn is one of my favorite uh, fantasy novels from my childhood. Um, Howl's Moving Castle is another book that I really loved growing up. Books like that have always inspired me to kind of tell stories that are about self-discovery in a very fantastical kind of genre setting. Um, so yeah, like I have a very diverse love of fantasy and fairy tales and genre. Um, for me, uh, Victoria, my influences are Raiders of the Lost Ark, like that for me was like, first of all, it was the first American movie I ever saw in a movie theater. So I was 11 years old and it was everything, that experience and that feeling of, you know, uh, the excitement and the thrills, I feel like is something that I've sort of chased my entire life. So Finding Ohana is my directorial debut. I actually haven't directed a movie prior to this. And so when I read the script, I was like, oh my God, it checks all the boxes. There's action, there's comedy, there's adventure, there's treasure, there's pirates, there's, you know, Asian Pacific Island leads. It's a female lead. Like it just kept getting better and better. And so for me, you know, uh, yeah, the, the influences, um, you know, are very much grounded in Steven Spielberg's work 
and, um, and, and every single Indiana Jones movie. Um, but yeah, like my heart really lives for action, adventure, and comedy. You did it very well. Oh, good. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. We thought it was fantastic. And also awesome prop for your necklace. I just noticed is from the film. <laughs> yeah. Very great. June um, was amazing. She got one for me. I, I feel dumb. I should have worn it. But like June was great because she gave out all these gifts and gave us some like incredible prop treasures. She, uh, I asked her to get me, the, if you've seen the movie, the ring they find, the first ring they find, I have like a replica of that ring upstairs. <laughs> and it's like one of my most valuable pieces of jewelry. It weighs like seven pounds, but I wear it when I can. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, going back to representation, I'd love to hear more about the casting of the newcomer Key, you know, Alex and Lindsay and all of those. That was um, Jude, yeah. man. I got to give credit where credit is due. Like Jude, take it away. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, you know, when we started, you know, the, casting the script, I mean, all of us knew that it's going to be challenging to find Hawaiian American leads. Like we already knew it was going to be challenging, but we were very dedicated to doing everything we could to like to scour the islands and to find new talent. And lots of kudos to Netflix, actually, who had the courage to allow us to cast newcomers. And they like could... they were committed because I had that the script had been sent out to other uh, studios and the feedback that I had received from them was and I was working in television at the time. So I, I remember thinking, like, this is not a priority for me, but I'm curious to see what people are saying, because the, the feedback I was getting was they were interested in hiring me to write other scripts. And so I finally asked a studio uh, exec one time, I was just like, if you were to make this, what would you have to do? And they were like, well, we don't know how to cast this movie. We, we don't have any actors that we could cast for these leads. And I just remember having a moment where I was like, this thing may never get made. And you know what? I'm not going to whitewash it. So, so kudos to Netflix because Netflix guaranteed me before um, I sold it to them that they would commit to finding the right actors and actresses for it. Yeah, and so, you know, we have Kea Peahu. This is her first time acting ever. I have to tell you a quick, adorable story about Kea. This is how inexperienced she was. Um, the week before we started rehearsal in LA, which was the week before we were getting ready to go to Hawaii to film, um, uh, I, I called her mom. I'm like, hey, how's Kea doing? Is she looking forward to rehearsal? Any questions? And Kea's mom was like, I gotta tell you, Kea's really stressed out. I'm like, why, what, what's going on? She's like, well, she hasn't memorized the script yet. And I was like, oh my God, it never even occurred to me to tell them, by the way, don't try to memorize the entire movie, but she's never had any screen experience. So in her mind, I think it's almost like a play. You memorize the whole thing, you go and you do it, you know, scene by scene. And so that really helped me understand, oh my gosh, on day one of rehearsal, I actually need to talk them through the entire acting process. What does it mean when you come on set? How do you prepare that you shoot the movie out of order, that you also shoot a scene multiple times from wide angles to close-up angles and so forth. Anyway, so that's an adorable story about Kea. And finding Alex Iono, this is also his first time acting. Now, both of them are performers. Kea is a dancer. And she, if you haven't seen her Instagram feed, I highly recommend you go check it out because that girl is fierce. She is fire. She can really, really dance. And she's a performer. She's got tons of attitude. And so when you see her Instagram, you know right away. You're like, you know, this girl has that performance quality. And same thing with Alex Iono. He's really, really talented singer. He does all these mashups. And he's got a huge following. And he also has tremendous charisma. And the other third newcomer is Lindsay Watson. Lindsay Watson has, you know, a performed a musical theater in high school. She's, you know, been a, a, you know, a working actress and, and model. Um, but she's also never acted before. So three out of our four kids had never set foot on a set on a, or, or any set before. I mean, I think for, for what they wound up pulling off, it's really remarkable. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, I, I'm so proud that Netflix has, and her, to hear you say that, you know, that it might not have been made, that breaks my heart. So I'm so happy that it was. So. Awesome. I think that like, I cannot tell you how hard it is to get a movie made. Like it is so difficult. So the sheer fact that this one exists in, like I told you, like the first response that I got to this thing was like, this is great. We, we're interested in you doing something else for us. And I'm just like, I work in TV. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm writing a lot already over here. 
this is the thing that I want. And they're like, well, so the fact that Netflix was so committed to it being authentic to what the script was trying to do, like I could, we could not have found a better place for it. And Jude was actually attached to direct it before Netflix came in. So they were great on all fronts because I was, you know, like, I was like, I don't want to whitewash this. You know, I want Jude, we, we want Jude, right? She's our director, right? Like they were very amenable to everything we wanted. So like we were very fortunate to have them.